Good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday. It's Inspirational Tuesday. The Bridgmans are here. Yay! Here. You can't do Inspirational Tuesday with just me, because there ain't much inspirational about me lately. <laughs> I'm just, you know, things are just flying all to pieces. But, oh. but um, I happen to be friends with some pretty inspirational people. If you talk about Matt Dibler, Travis Bridgman, I, I told somebody last night, I said, the two of you will co-preach my funeral. Oh my and oh I said, oh, if they're still here. <laughs> I had to think about that because I thought knows. I may right. outlive all right. of you. But, but it is so weird because you co-preached my daughter's funeral. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those, who else would I call on but you and Matt? And, and there's somebody when things, when tragedy happens in our life, when sadness comes upon us, we have certain people we go to, and y'all are my go-to people, and I'm looking to make sure my mic's there, because I felt something down here, and I was afraid my mic had fallen <laughs> off. <laughs> but, but you always have that go-to group of people, friends and family that you trust and you know, and I sent out a prayer challenge last week because I got some news I didn't like, and uh, biopsy is not a word you want to hear and um, it's growing fast is not a word you want to hear, but we know how to stop the growth of any and everything bad. Mm. And so I just said, um, I'm gonna depend on everybody I know and love to pray me through whatever, whatever's happening. Mm. And, and that's what we have to do. We have to turn to those that we know and we love and we trust. And so you pick up the phone and you call and you say, put me on the prayer list, put me on the prayer list. And my sister, who's funny, and she's at home with COVID right now. She and my brother-in-law have had oh. COVID for oh. about 10 days, oh sick. And, mm. <clears throat> and she's like my prayer warrior. And I said, Lila, you gotta get me through this. And she said, absolutely, we will. We know that we can get each other through everything. But about 10 days ago, Southern Gospel Music faced the loss of a wonderful, wonderful lady that we all loved. Yes. Miss Lita yes. was like, you know, we're losing all these amazing people who love to go to Southern Gospel concerts. She lived for it. She, she lived, lived for it. it. She, she didn't care it if it was in everything. Memphis or in Jacksonville right. or in Sparta, right. Texas. She didn't care. Right. She wanted right. to go. Yeah. And she supported gospel music. And that is so important. And the SGMA just wholeheartedly. Oh my gosh, yeah. She had, uh, about her uh, place she had over on 20, Runt's Place, she had that section just dedicated to Southern Gospel memorabilia. It's almost like a like a satellite a of our museum. Yes, I mean, yeah. it is amazing what she had there, and yeah. uh, she and, and support us in, in the and raising the benefit uh, concerts and all. Mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, talked to Vicky, uh, that was her her uh, sidekick. Daughter in law. Yeah, da daughter, daughter in daughter, love. And daughter, daughter adopted. Yes. Daughter in yes. love. They yes, called her. Yes. Yes. And. We're going to continue on with the benefit uh, in memory of Dr. Jerry Goff, you mm -hmm. know, also in honor and memory of Lita yeah. uh, Grant. Yeah, yeah, she was something else. And, and you know, I don't think I knew her history before her death, that she was very involved in the business world and she was very yes. successful mm -hmm. because she was just down to earth Lita with us and she was like a big to do. She was very smart, she was very focused on planning and and yes. that's how she was able to do what she did in her lifetime. That's right. And she used that uh, in organizing uh, the singings and everything and uh, and just um, just, just had such a heart. Of course, her, her home going service was like a gospel concert. Mm -hmm. Of we course. Had, we had about yeah. Yeah. five or six, I guess it was, uh, yeah. uh, that, that, uh, sing, uh, singers. Uh, we had uh, Mike LeFevre mm -hmm. and Jeremy Peace and Bob Sellers, and, and of course, Gloria Bound Quartet, uh -huh. and, and um, uh, Jackie Fortner. It's just like a gospel singing. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah. quite a send off. It well, was. <laughs> I was telling somebody yesterday about Angela's funeral because I said, you know, we were talking about movies and how sometimes the music makes a movie and how the movie Ghost, you know, it made the Righteous Brothers all this money, but they'd already sold the rights to that song, so it made them nothing really. <laughs> but that song sets the tone. And I said, when I walk in church, and I don't know if you're guilty of this or not, but I get my program and I look at my songs and then I go, oh, or I go, ah, <laughs> I get excited. <laughs> Sometimes I'm disappointed because I like certain songs. I'm mm. a traditionalist. I'm an old timey. 
I like what I like, and you can't change my mind, you mm -hmm. know. And mm -hmm. I, I think that it ought to be a law that you do just as I am. It ought to be a law that you do softly and tenderly. It ought to be a law that you sing uh, Old, Old Rugged, Rugged Cross. Cross. That's <laughs> you right. know that. That's right. And love, love lifted, lifted me. me. That's you know right. that. <laughs> and, and I said, you know, those songs set the tone for your day. Mm -hmm. And and that's what it is. And so today I was getting my hair done and. I was playing this song and, and Leah and I were laughing because it's written by the same guy who wrote the gospel song, but it's certainly not gospel. And this is a gentleman who has never smoked, drank, never even had a cup of coffee, doesn't hunt, fish, crazy. I mean, he just, he's a workaholic, but he's a writing-aholic too. And, and he, he brought this from his mother buying him a guitar at five years old. Hmm. And so you have Lee who is great on the piano but Lee likes different music than y'all like. Mm -hmm. He's not into that's Southern true. Gospel, is yeah, he? That's true. Yeah, that's true. does he like classical? Does he like, what does he like to play? He likes what he makes up. He just likes to play what, what he what he writes himself or just uh -huh. comes, comes, you know, just inspired to just play. He just loves to just do that. And now, uh, did he have lessons or did it come he naturally? He took lessons for a while, okay. he did. Because um, I don't know if y'all know it, but the young man behind the set today, Donovan played the piano. When you did Last Date, he used to play that for his mom all the time. Oh, wow. Um, what about and his that? mom wow. passed away suddenly, and so oh, it wow. was it was like bringing it back for him. So oh. thank you for doing that, well, because yeah. um, oh. that was his mama's delight to see her son play that piano and to play that song. Well, so that was pretty awesome. Well, that was my mom. Anywhere we went, uh, <coughs> I remember when I was you know just a little kid, if we go somewhere, if there's a piano, in the room somewhere, I'd wind up over there, you know, <laughs> playing for mom and dad, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, Travis, did you take lessons too? Oh, yes, yes, yes. okay. Uh, that's about seven years, I think. Wow, and, um, wow. So, um, well, you tickle yes. me because you'll always say, well, I need to know what you want me to do because I need to practice, and I just go, practice? You got to oh, practice? Yes, oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> I just cannot imagine you having to practice because you just yep. have done it for so long. Practice makes polished. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know, you're right. right, you're right. Now, Alicia, can you play an instrument? Oh, yes, I, yeah. I play the flute and the, first the, chair the, in the piano, band. but not as well as Travis and Okay, that's, that's, okay. That's what yes. brought us together. We <clears throat> were in the high school band together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could you play the piano in your church? If you had to? If I had to, um, in an emergency situation, I could, but really, for to just be able to open the book and play any number that's called out, I would need to practice the, yeah. the song first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I make a unpaid solicitation Absolutely, right now. Absolutely, because you are, that's what I'm because leading up to. Okay, that's thank what you, I'm thank leading you. up to. Okay. <laughs> well, her mom's been our pianist for over 65 years, mm -hmm. and uh, she's asked me about two years ago to be looking to find someone to step in and to, to you know, gradually take her place, and so I've been searching. Uh, I went through all the resources I know and trying to find uh, someone that could come and and play the piano at our church at Antioch, and so far I've just not had anyone to um, uh, to talk to uh, about it. And so let me ask if anybody out there uh, that would like a place to come and to, to exercise your your ministry of music at a church, uh, we'd be glad to have you at Antioch Baptist Church in coming. I'm also looking for a song leader. My mm -hmm. song leader said he needs to, to step aside as well. So I'm looking for a song leader and a church pianist. And so. Um, Contact information, I guess, would be 770-283-7993. Uh, 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 That's my cell phone number, 770-283-7993. If you'd be interested, I'd love to talk to you about coming to uh, Antioch Baptist Church and coming to be our pianist. And uh, uh, we, we, we would love to have somebody come. That would be awesome. It would be a great um, help. I told you our story at First Baptist. We have two, two people who play it's every other week. Brenda does it one week, Jody does it one week, Brenda does it one week, Jody does it one week, so they mm -hmm. rotate. But, you know, we had Miss Betty Jo Harris was there, who I might say this rug that we're on was hers. Mm -hmm. So many things <laughs> that I treasure were hers. Her she piano. played the piano her, for 50 piano. years, her piano. Yes, you played yes, her yes, piano. Yes. She played at First Baptist for 50 years. So mm -hmm. those people do what they're supposed to do for as long as they can, and then they get tired. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And they want to rest, and your mama might want to rest a little bit. <laughs> yes, that's right. Reckon she's earned the rest? I think so. Yes, oh, yes, she has. 
Yes, she has. She I has. Think so. yes. And her health is declining in different ways, and it's harder for her to mm -hmm. do than it. And we don't want to push it too far that can put too much on her. So right. we really would like to find someone to take. I hate to say take her place, Nobody but, can yeah, take her place. but she yeah. keeps yeah. telling right. me, she said, it's time. She yeah. said, I'm old enough and and it's time you need to find somebody to take my place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're looking. Yep, yep. Well, hopefully yeah. hopefully this shout out will find you somebody and coming is growing so fast and there's oh, got to be somebody yes, over there talented. Yes. Even if it's like Donovan, you know, he was taking music lessons as a kid because his mother wanted him to. And um, somebody like that who could step into the church and then just learn and gradually grow with the church. That mm -hmm. would be awesome. Yes, so, yes. Plus it brings some young blood in there. I don't know if y'all know yes. this, but we're all getting white-headed. Travis, you've got white hair. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, I, we're getting white-headed, I, I stopped I stop using Mother Nature to fool Father Time. So I just let it grow out naturally. Yes, yes, and I think that's a wise move because we all just uh, gracefully get there. So, yeah. Well, could you slide over to the okay. piano and do one piano number, okay. and then we're gonna when you come back, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about Lita, and then we're gonna play this song, and it's called Jesus Called. Okay. And truly, it was written by a gentleman here in uh, LJ that so strange because I'd never heard any of his music and I was kind of embarrassed when they introduced me and said he's going to be helping you out today and I said okay and he said you like my song never heard your song and I was like I'm sorry I've never heard this music but that talent that raw talent when you learn it from your parents or whoever and you don't have formal education you write from the heart and this song is truly from the heart because it was written the day they lay his mother to rest and so mm -hmm. i think for a, i think when i heard the little bit of it i heard i thought for lita it's just perfect so i okay. think we'll share that as soon as we come back but we oh, want okay. you to sneak over to the piano okay oh i had something else in mind but you yes, mentioned sir. old rugged cross so i'll do that for you i okay? love old okay. rugged cross mm -hmm. okay. yay y'all okay. sit back and enjoy <laughs>
my song. My song, my song. I don't know who wrote it, but they knew I would love it. I love that song. Okay, y'all, when, when Lita passed away, I love that they did this. They didn't want flowers. They wanted remembrance to SGMA. That's right. How mm. awesome is that? Can you tell, Travis, tell people how to do this and how to make a donation because it will make her legacy and her, her memory live on forever. Yes, uh, we had it set up on our Facebook page. Uh, you could go and, and it was part of a, uh, a campaign where you could donate in her memory. We can all go to the Southern Gospel Music Association and also you can go to our website, sgma.org and click on the donate and we can take online donations there as well uh, but it would be such a, a tribute to her um, mm -hmm. like you said she didn't want flowers but uh, she wanted to this be part of a, a, a legacy for her if you wanted to to show your appreciation for her um, just support what she loved which was southern gospel music and the SGMA and I'm so, going to write y'all a check before you leave okay, today, so great. don't forget, and it's in memory and in honor of a very, very, very special lady. Thank you. Thank now, you. Now, I want to share this song, and <clears throat> when you think about the day you lay your mother to rest, oh, you, yeah. you laid your mother to rest yes, right yes. at the beginning of COVID. Um, mm. I laid my mother to rest, and I, I was telling somebody yesterday, it's been 20 years, but I remember holding my mama's hands for the last time. You remember those moments with your mama. Oh, but to walk in from, you know, it's your mother's funeral day, and in 10 minutes you write a song that is as powerful as the song we're about to play. So I want y'all to sit back, and it's very appropriate. It's, it's almost appropriate that Lita left here on Mother's Day because she had no biological children, but she adopted Southern Gospel music. That's, she was the mother I, of Southern I, Gospel music. That's what I said at a funeral. I said she yeah. didn't have any children of her own, but she looked at the singers as being her sons and daughters. Absolutely. And she she yeah. treated them that way. She mm. did, and, and talk about meals and memories and just, just fun, fun times. And so today, in honor of Miss Lita, I want you to sit back and listen. The name of the song is Jesus Called. And um, I want you to um, think about, um, there'll be that moment that we are all called home, and don't you want somebody to say, oh my gosh, look what she did for others. Oh my gosh, look what she meant to me. Oh my gosh, look what kind of person she was. And she was the best. She mm -hmm. was just amazing. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Let's Dear sit friends. back and enjoy a, an original song by um, a gentleman that it, it blows my mind. I think he's written 25 or 35 songs and he'll write some country, he'll write some gospel and just a blend. And I don't quite get it, but this is how it goes. Here we are. Save. 
I've got my little mommy in the band. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi, 
not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. We're back. Okay, Inspirational Tuesday. Alicia, that means that Travis probably got the Bible out last night and decided on a message. He did. Yes. Do you often help him decide, or does it just come no. to his brain? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, the Lord does that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. no, well, the I, Lord sent you to be a helpmate. Amen. That's yes, right. he did. Right. Other ways. Yes, he did. Right. Yes, he did. Right. I seldom know. I hear it fresh just like you do. I love that. <laughs> Travis, what, what are we going to talk about? What do we need to be inspired about today? Well, we've been talking about mothers. We just heard that beautiful song about mothers, and we talked about mine. And, and of course, on Sunday was Mother's Day, and mm -hmm. we had just a wonderful celebration with our mothers there. We honored our youngest and eldest mother. And, mm -hmm. uh, and who was the eldest? Uh, uh, well, my mother. Yeah, well, Ava was the, awesome. the eldest. I that's right. That. That's right. I don't yeah. want to say oldest. She was yes. the most senior, as yes. I like to yes. say. Yes. Yes. But anyway, of course, and so motherhood is so special. And if it wasn't for mothers, we wouldn't any of us be here. Right. But to be a mother, it takes children, and it just—I I just can't ignore the fact that it happened the week before Mother's Day, that this happened with the Supreme Court decision leak that came out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm sure everybody was aware of, of the situation the the Supreme Court was uh, uh, deliberating on a decision from a Mississippi case uh, where they was uh, involved in the Roe versus Wade decision which legalized abortion and in their discussions uh, which is supposed to be uh, confidential and not anything to, to come until they announce their final decision but somehow it got leaked out uh, very conveniently, mm -hmm. uh, this has really stirred up the uh, the pro-abortion side of the issue. But anyway, uh, what they were saying that uh, if they overturn Roe versus Wade, it's not the end of abortion. Unfortunately, it just returns back to the states. So the states that are that are pro-abortion will stay pro-abortion, but those that are not uh, will be able to deal with it on that basis. It no longer it'll be taken out of the Supreme Court's hands, mm -hmm. which it should have been uh, originally. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the uh, uh, so this decision came down, and so, of course, our, our, my position on abortion as a minister of the gospel, I have to go by what the Bible says. And uh, I want you to think just for a moment. I don't know what side you're on this morning, where, what you're watching, what you, how you feel. It's a very controversial subject, but yet the Bible does not shy away from it. Although the word abortion is not in the Bible, uh, it is implied, of course, and God is the author of life. But I want you to think about this. If, say, here's a mother and she has a child in her house and she feeds that child, she nurtures that child, takes care of him, and he depends upon her, for some reason she invites a stranger into her house with the explicit purpose of killing her child. And she stands by it when this stranger comes in and kills her child and she stands by and, and, and is con consents to it. Well, that's no different than abortion. Think about it. A mother's womb is, is the home or the house of a, of a baby that's developing. It's nurtured. It's fed from its mother. It is taken care of. That's its, that's its safe place, if you will. But then a stranger comes in, a person of a doctor, and comes in and takes away that life, and the mother's consenting to it. Now, in the first case, no court in the land would not convict that stranger of murder, and the mother was conspiracy herself. But then in the same uh, situation, you take about when taking a, a life within the womb, uh, somehow it's protected. Well, the, the argument is, well, that, that uh, is not a person, that a, that a baby that's unborn is not yet a person, therefore it is not entitled to the uh, rights of the uh, protection of the rights. Well, the issue is personhood. The issue is personhood. If we, if we can see that that, that that unborn child is actually a person, I think that would settle the issue. 
It would be a matter, uh, not, not, a, not a, a choice or a decision, but it would actually be uh, taking a human life. Mm -hmm. And you know, and personhood has been the issue uh, from the beginning. I'll take you back to the 1800s, I think it's 1857, a, a slave, a black man named Dred Scott, uh, petitioned the Supreme Court for his freedom and the ruling was the Dred Scott decision was that a slave, a black person at that time, was not a fully human. They were not a real person. They were three-fifths of a person. That's what they ruled. They were property. They were not persons. Therefore, they, the, the Fifth Amendment called that no one could take away your property, so that it ruled in favor of the slave owner because the slave was his property, so his property could not be taken from him. So that was, that was declared that a, that a slave was not a person. But then the 13th Amendment came and abolished slavery. And then the 14th Amendment, which established the rights of citizenship for the slaves, for, for black people at that time. And then the 15th Amendment gave them the right to vote. So once that, once that uh, uh, person was declared to be actually a person, then they had all the protections of the government. The same thing happened in Nazi Germany. How was it they was able to exterminate six million Jews? Well, the German government, the Supreme Court of Germany, ruled that Jews were not full persons. They were not, they were not, they were not persons, therefore, once you depersonalize someone, mm -hmm. then you can do whatever you want to with the for protection of the law. So that, that gave them cover to actually exterminate six million Jews. But we know that they were a person. So the question is, is an unborn child a person? Well, I'm not looking at the legal side, I'm looking at the spiritual and the scriptural side. First of all, I want to assert, the Bible declares that God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he man, male and female. So God is the creator, and I believe that life begins at conception. Let's listen to the verse in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. When God called the prophet Jeremiah, it isn't, wasn't after he was born. Listen to this verse. Before I, God speaking, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Uh, to sanctify means to set apart, to make holy. So, uh, so Jeremiah was yet in his mother's womb, even before, uh, even, even in the mind and heart of God. God knows every person that's going to come into the world. And it's just the, the process that he has ordained is that for, for a woman to, 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 to bring forth in childbirth, to bring that, that person together. When their soul is united with their body and their spirit is breathed into them, they are a, a, a person. And that begins at conception. It says, For I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. In Ruth chapter 4, verse 13, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, we know what it's referring to here, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And so the Lord is, is the one that, that gives uh, conception. It's not just the uniting in the, in the biological se uh, sense of the, of the seed and, and the egg. It's God gives conception. So life begins at conception. But what, r what really nails it to me is Psalm chapter 139. Chapter 139, in the beginning of verse 13, I want to encourage you to, to take your Bible and read these three verses. And I want to just share those just for a moment. For it says, David speaking, and he was saying, For thou, speaking of God, hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Now these words in the Hebrew, where it says thou hast possessed, it means thou hast formed my reins as his kidney, speaking of the, 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 inner, the, the, the uh, internal organs. So God formed the organs, and it says, Thou hast covered me. The word covered means to knit together, like an like a, like a, a embroidery. Well, we know in, that biology teaches us that our DNA is what? It's like wrapped. It's, it's a series of chromosomes that's wrapped around a strand, as it were, and so we, that, that from, even from conception, the DNA was present, and it's the blueprint to that life. God has, at, at conception, everything about that child, all that that person's going to be, their height, their weight, their, their propensity, everything throughout life is, is right there in the DNA, in the blueprint, and God created it that way. And so at conception, the genetic code contains the blueprint for that life. Every characteristic of that child is there at conception. Verse 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, that my soul knoweth right well. Verse 15, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret 
and curiously wrought. The word curiously wrought, again, is like embroidered. Again, it's like the, the master weaver is it, it, it's, it's, it's weaving together the, 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 that, that baby in curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. The word unperfect means to be rolled together like a ball. What do we see in an embryo? It's like, it's like, it's, it's like a, a mass together, as it were. And so God has, 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 uh, uh, put, uh, begins life in that form. And so it's rolled, and the Hebrew literally means that which is rolled together, ready to un, unroll, to unroll. So that's where we get like the word embryo. And in the book, all my members were written. There's the DNA code. All my members were written in your book, Lord. You, you had it from, from my conception. Uh, you knew exactly what I would do and what would happen throughout my life, which in continuous were fashioned when yet there was none of them. All right, well, we know what makes a person. A person has intellect, a person has emotions, can, can respond to, to, uh, uh, to stimulus and so forth. Listen to this. When, uh, when Elizabeth, who had conceived John the Baptist, of course, his, his birth was announced and was uh, prophesied and so forth. So when Elizabeth, uh, uh, when, when Mary, who had been, been told by Gabriel that she would, she would uh, bring forth the Messiah, that, that the Holy Spirit would come upon her, would overshadow her, and that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So he calls that, that at conception, he calls it that holy thing, that holy sanctified thing. But when Mary came... Mary came in the presence of Elizabeth. Listen to what the Bible says. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation or the greeting of Mary, that the babe, John the Baptist, yet in her womb, leaped in her womb. How can a fetus, how can an unformed mass have emotions? How can it respond? How can it move? Mothers know they feel that, that, that kick. They feel that life moving within them. And Elizabeth was so filled with the Holy Ghost. And again, she says, for as low as the voice, soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ear, the babe lip, leaped in my womb for joy, for joy. <laughs> oh, listen, you know, it's, it's uh, interesting. I, I think it's pretty well proved. I mean, we don't have time to get this. Just, the Bible just full uh, of, of references to the womb, to conception, uh, to, to, you know, the beginning of life. And God is the author of life. But, you know, um, one of the things that seems hypocritical to me that the, the pro-abortion side, their claim is, well, it's my body, my choice. You know, it's my body. Well, like I said, when that child, the, the choice began before the baby was conceived. Amen? That's when the choice was made. And so after that, has, once you put that in motion, someone said, well, if that, if that fetus is, is not really a, a, alive, just leave it alone and nothing will happen. You say, but life uh, continues and through the process and eventually to the birth. But listen, those demanding the right to abortion claim that the government has no right to tell them what to do with their body. My body, my choice. Yet the same crowd, when the government tells them that they must have a vaccine, they comply and criticize everybody that doesn't comply to what the government says. Mm -hmm. Seems kind of hypocritical mm -hmm. to me. Just it's kind of hypocritical. Bit. Yeah, tiny bit. Well, bits. did you know, and I said, well, you know, I said the Bible doesn't use the word abortion, but again, it uses terms that imply that. The early church fathers, in writing and trying to codify the, the standing of the early church, listen to this, what they said. This is literally what they said. This is one of their, if you would say, commandments. You shall not murder a child by abortion. That's what they said in the early church. Now, that's, that's, and, and that's, that's, that's what I believe our position is today. So what is our response as, as the church? Well, we're to love those. We're to love all sinners. We were all sinners. And God's grace is sufficient for all sin. He said if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just, forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Abortion is forgivable. Uh, all sins are forgivable. But yet we have a duty. We have a duty. I think about this in Proverbs chapter 24. Don't you think about this in our day to day. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it, and he that keepeth thy soul doth not he know it. Shall he not render every man according to his works? In other words, we just kind of say, well, we're just going to, we're just going to claim, uh, you know, ignorance about it. No, we can't. Mm -mm. When there's been 60 million abortions, and I've, uh, I've since Roe versus Wade, 
And so the church's position is we stand for life. You know, in the day that, that the law was given, uh, when this controversy came with Israel, and Moses stood on the mount on one side, he, he said, I set before you life, and I set before you death. He says, choose life that you might live. And so it is, I, I pray that every mother uh, that, that, that is expecting that she will choose life. For God is the author of that life, and only he should take it away. But if you've experienced that, we know the devastation, despite what they claim and, and all that, it, it's, they have abortion parties today to raise money for abortions and, and things like this. The heart of man is deceitful above all things, are desperately wicked. Evil men and seducers have gotten worse and worse. The, the Bible talks about having their conscience seared as with a hot iron. In other words, not even to be able to feel guilt about something as heinous as that is. But our prayer is that if you've had an abortion, that you'll ask God to forgive you. If you're not saved, just say, Lord Jesus, I know you died upon the cross and, you should, and, and, and I put my trust in you. Come into my heart and save me, not just from, from the sin of abortion, but, but from, from, from sin, the sin nature itself, and he will deliver you. Finally, I want you to say uh, that uh, the, when David went out to, to face Goliath, they said, you know, who are you? What, what are you going to do? And he said, is there not a cause? Mm -hmm. Is there not a cause? Church, there's a cause for us today to take a stand for, for life, to stand, uh, stand with God, who is the author of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that your word would just speak to hearts today, Lord, in this very difficult subject. But, Lord, it's very simple once we, we, we see what you say in your word and we believe and we trust what you have said in your word. And I pray that you would just speak to hearts and perhaps someone that's had an abortion or know someone, they might be able to, to give them counsel. And just pray, God, that you would just bring uh, a peace through all of this. Lord, pray for our nation. We do pray, Father, for a turn back to Thee, and that we might be a nation who respects and honors life, both in the womb and out of the womb, and that which is nearing the end of life as well. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> awesome message. Awesome message. <laughs> Um, do you know that Ansley's expecting a baby? Did you know that? No. Our Ansley? No. no. And uh, abortion was discussed mm. and said no, absolutely not. Um, the father sadly died a few weeks ago. He was oh, a my. severe diabetic and um, oh, had a, died. And, um, you know, hmm. but there's going to be a baby. There's going to be a baby. Right. And um, who knows what will happen? Who knows? We have no idea what flavor. We don't know, but, but Dawn says, you know, girl, boy, she said, let's go shopping. I said, we can't. We don't know what it is. And she said, well, we can buy generic. I said, no, we'll wait till we know. But, but it is, it was not planned. It was one of those things, you know, and, and, but it is life. It is life. Mm. So, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. <clears throat> going to be interesting. Congratulations. So, Congratulations. There's no, uh, there's no formula around. So <laughs> I guess it'll grow up oh, on sweet what tea. A, what about that? What about that baby formula shortage? Oh, it's crazy, wow. y'all. It is crazy. Um, mm -hmm. We have, uh, you want to have a couple of announcements you want to do, but we want to go now to two songs okay. by the Bridgemans. Okay. You know who the Bridgemans are. I've you know. heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Okay. Y'all have been coming here for many, many years with us, and I think about the lavender outfit that you wore the first time. Oh. <laughs> Angela's favorite color. Oh. And I always remember, Alicia walked in and I told Angela, I said, oh, Alicia looks so cute, you on your favorite color. So, <laughs> so here we go. We're going to go oh. to some music by the Bridgemans. Okay. Side looking in, but he is in here with us, going through this time with us. He's promised to never leave us and never forsake us, and he's promised to be in the midst of our storm, in the midst of our trials, and that he is with us when we go through this time. Well, it's good to know that he is in the midst.
We're back. Okay, Travis, we got some announcements. One, yes. a night of quartets, May the 21st. Glory Bound and several other quartets will be at Sue Talley Baptist Church on Knoxbridge Road in Canton, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Not too far that piece, not too far that piece. It's kind of right there in the middle, and y'all can hang out with uh, Glory Bound, Bob Reese, and so many great guys, and uh, several groups are going to be there, and they are... The groups are three quartets, the four men, four part harmony, and uh, a 12 man finale. It's gonna be really, really fun. And it's Glory Bound, Joy Masters, and One by Faith. So there you go. And uh, we love the Joy Masters, love Glory Bound, so there you go. Now you've got some announcements we need to get in. Yes, uh, we'll have a revival at Antioch Baptist Church. I'll have Brother, uh, Reverend Bud Sutton with us. And um, that'll be June the uh, 12th through the 15th at Antioch Baptist Church. And then we'll have our, our singing, of Southern Gospel singing, with Barry Rowland and Deliverance. Now, Barry is Kyla Rowland's son. If you remember all the wonderful songs she wrote, mm -hmm. you know, One Scarred Hand, uh, just goes on and on. It'll be a night of tribute to the, the songs of Kyla Rowland. That'll be June the 26th at 6 p.m. at Antioch Baptist Church. Come and be with us. Let's fill the house. Come and be with <laughs> us. Now, um, what about... What about summer? Are we getting back to, are you going to have kids? Are you going to have a, a, anything for the kids yeah, this we're going, year? Yeah, we're going to have vacation Bible school. Okay. We, we, we have it one day I on a Saturday. I know COVID is still kind of dominating a little bit of what we do. Yeah, so. it's uh, July the 10th. I believe that's right. It's on a Saturday. It'd be from 10 till 2 uh, at the church. We'll, we usually have like a bouncy house and, 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 and we've had a little petting zoo before and things. Mm -hmm. Just something, you know, for the kids that day. We just have it just all day on Saturday mm -hmm. when we plan mm -hmm. to have that. Good, good. One more. One more. Yes. Uh, June the t uh, 10th, Alicia and I will be singing at the, the Ritz Theater in Tacoa. That's a Friday night at 7 o'clock. Also there will be Clark Kiesler. So we want to invite you to come out to, to, to be with us on June the 10th at uh, 7 o'clock at the Ritz Theater in Tacoa. To, uh, to is it an old theater yes. that's been oh, redone? Yeah. Oh, it's oh my gosh, that oh, sounds it's amazing. Beautiful. Yes, yes. It's yes. On June the 10th. June the 10th is wow. a Friday night. Yes. Wow, that yes. sounds cool. They okay. have started having one monthly singing mm -hmm. each month, and uh, it's it's special. It's a beautiful yes. place. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. That's that's really cool. And what time does it start? S seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock. Now, I see the clock, and it means that it is time for you to sneak okay. back over there. Okay. So can okay. you sneak back to the piano? It would be a sin to have Travis Bridgman oh, here and okay. not get two songs out of that piano. So here we go to Brother Travis oh, one more time. Oh, here we go. And, you know, when we think about, um, he, he did my song, Old Rugged Cross. If, if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, I really need to hear a good song that will lift my spirits, just go, you know, pull up something like Love Lifted Me. Pull up something like... Um, uh, in the garden, something that'll make you relax, or just sit back and listen to some great piano music because I bet you the Bridgemans are on YouTube too, so you can check them out. Now, here we go to Brother Travis.
Miss Alicia, we are going to end the show while Travis sneaks back over here. Is there anything that we forgot that you need to say? Because you never get to say much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is there anything we forgot? <laughs> Uh, well, you caught me off guard there. I don't know. <laughs> I know that's exciting about the June tenth singing to be at that cool theater. Oh, yeah. That is yes. awesome. Yes. That is awesome. Now, have y'all done Austin. any new music lately? Uh, we've got some new songs, not recorded, but we've been we've been singing some new songs. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, um, we don't have them recorded yet. We we had opportunity to uh, to make a CD, but it just got to where we just wasn't able to work it in and mm -hmm. so hopefully of course COVID hit and everything everything shut down so right. we'd like to do a new project at some point. Yep, yep. But, uh, there is something I thought of and that's the new museum in Pigeon Forge. Well, sure. Right, right. About that. Yes, yeah. we just found out yesterday that they've moved the bus. The bus has been weatherproofed. Mm -hmm. It was not weatherproofed inside the museum but it has been now and it should be I guess today it is at the museum, the yep. new museum Moving it in place mm -hmm. up there, and mm -hmm. uh, we're, it's, it's going to be parked along the parkway there in Pigeon Forge. It'll be, uh, and then uh, around it will be the, uh, what we call the Walk of Fame, which is the commemorative bricks. Uh, people that uh, pay $100 to get the brick in, engraved, and it'll be laid there around, mm -hmm. around the bus, which the bus was the most, one of our most popular attractions there at the mm -hmm. museum, so it should really draw a crowd. But again, it, all the exposure, people driving by, the thousands that drive through the parkway through Pigeon Forge, will be able to see that Blackwood Brothers bus and mm -hmm. inviting people awesome. to come into the museum. So That's we're just awesome. very excited about that. Now tell folks that. how to get to the museum. Uh, it, it's, um, well, the, the way I tell, if you know where the where the big King Kong is on top of the building there in Pigeon Forge. You know, Marietta has the big chicken. Well, Pigeon Forge has got the big monkey. <laughs> and so right across the street from the, from the Wax Museum, it's there at Teatster Road there in the parkway mm -hmm. in Pigeon Forge. Mm -hmm. And it's the Biblical Times Theater. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been there for a while. They have uh, at the dinner theater, they have, they've had gospel music, and then they also have a, dr a drama, just state-of-the-art uh, uh, equipment they have there have holographic images. Mm -hmm. Somebody you know that was a, was a star on yes, there. Yeah, the, yeah. One of the yeah. dark dramas they had. He was that main king. He wasn't was he? King Herod. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I tried right to get on him about yes, that. He was. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so it's a wonderful time. Of, uh, and so when it gets fully uh, uh, opened up, we, we don't have a date yet. But when it opens. Uh, the, the, it's actually three museums, I mean, uh, three attractions. It'll be the Biblical Times Theater, it'll be the SGMA Museum, and also, if you remember Christmas Gardens at Gatlinburg, the owner bought all the Christmas Gardens mm -hmm. uh, and has, has recreated another Christmas Gardens within, inside that complex. So it's going to be it's, a, it's gonna be amazing. a wonderful, that's, a wonderful yeah, destination awesome. for all the church that's groups awesome. and And I heard and tell there's some pretty good food there, too. Oh, <laughs> feasters, <laughs> feasters at Teasters. It's feasters wonderful. Feasters yes, Teasters. It that's is, right. yes. That's right. <laughs> Well, I have one thing that I think I have enough time to read this real quick. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. That, to me, describes this person. She oh, is so no. peaceful, so <laughs> joyful, so kind, so gentle. And so to Miss Alicia, happy Mother's Day belated to you. I love you. I love you. Thank it's you. time for us love to get out of here. Soon. We've got to go. We have an appointment with Mike's Fried Chicken. We'll mm -hmm. see y'all again soon. Right. Only on ETC. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375.